This is Lab 20, this depreciation schedules, and it goes with Chapter 9. <clears throat> All right, so there are instructions, there are word instructions in the folder, and there's actually an Excel template this time that you can use. <clears throat> All right. Use information below to complete the Havilena Construction Depreciation Schedule, then upload. All right, on January 1st of 2016, Havilena Construction purchased three pieces of heavy equipment to build roads. You have a new crane, pavement roller, and a bulldozer. Set the depreciation schedules for each piece of equipment using the following estimates. Okay, so we're going to do the crane first. The crane's total cost is $100,000. I wish we could buy a crane for $100,000. It is estimated that the crane will no longer be useful to Havilena Construction after four years of service. At the end of the four years, the crane will probably be worth $20,000. The best way to depreciate the crane is using the straight line method. Fell the depreciation schedule for the crane. <clears throat> okay, so we have a couple things up here. First of all, the crane's depreciable cost is cost minus residual value. So it's going to be, you know what, I'm going to type it in here. So it's going to be its cost of $100,000 minus its residual of twenty. So it's set up like a template, an Excel template, but it still has, it's not set up really with the formulas like I would like it. But anyway, all right. So it's depreciable cost is $80,000. <clears> all right. So the asset actually cost a hundred thousand. And this is on January 1st of 2016. So this first row right here, don't actually, don't actually do anything right here. All right. Just block that out. You don't want to write anything in there. All right, so then its depreciable cost is eighty thousand. All right, its rate, if it's being depreciated over four years, it's one over the life. So it's one divided by four. Uh, let's just make that a number. Can I make it a fraction? I don't know. But that is also one fourth. Okay. <laughs> And then multiply to get the depreciation expense. So the depreciable cost times the one over four, and that's your, that's your depreciation this year. All right. And then accumulated depreciation is also the twenty thousand because it's just been one year. Then book value equals the cost minus accumulated depreciation. So for this first one, it's the hundred thousand minus 20,000 and that's your book value. Actually, I can make this big so we can see everything. <clears throat> All right, so the next year depreciable cost is still 80,000. All right, the rate stays the same. It's straight line. So it's, it's one fourth, it's one over the life. All right, Excel is gonna change it to a decimal place. I don't know if I can make it do fractions. Can I? Oh, look at that. I can. All right. It doesn't matter. It's the same answer. And then you just, you know, multiply it. The depreciable cost times the rate. All right. And then accumulate depreciation. So she does have this set up a little bit like a template. It's going to grow every time. So this is going to be what we had in accumulate last year plus the current year. All right, it's going to accumulate. And then book value is going to be your cost minus your accumulated. So this year it's going to be the 100,000 minus 40,000. All right, so depreciable cost is 80. That doesn't change. It's actually every year. The one fourth doesn't change. One thing with straight line is that um, it stays the same every year. All right, that's why it's called straight line. So really, once you have it, you could just copy this down if you wanted to. Okay, and then notice my formula also copied down. Well, the formula was already there, but it copied down. So now I just need to do my cost minus accumulated. 
and cost minus accumulated. All right, and notice it stops when it hits salvage value. All right, book value will equal salvage. Oops, you're right. <laughs> At the end of the life. Okay, so that's it for the crane. All right, let's pull up the roller and see what happens with the roller. All right, the pavement roller costs $625,000 and is believed the roller will have about 200,000 miles of pavement rolling of useful life. The company thinks the roller will be worth about 25,000 when it is done using the roller. The roller is used up as it rolls pavement, so it will be depreciated by the pavement mileage rolled. Um, that's referred to as units of production method. The contracts that have any construction have lined up for the next several years showed that we'll be rolling 40,000 miles in 2016, 42,500 miles in 2017, 57,000 miles in 2018, and 60,500 miles in 2019. Use units of production to depreciate the roller. All right, so it's $625,000, $25,000 salvage. Okay, so it's cost minus residual, very similar to what was up here. So you're going to have... Six hundred twenty-five thousand minus the twenty-five thousand dollars salvage, and then you're going to divide that by the total of the. Well, you're going to divide it by the life in miles. So it was two hundred thousand miles that they thought it was going to roll. Okay. So then that's going to equal 625 minus 25,000 divided by 200. And that's $3 per mile rolled. Okay, that's what that means. All right, so once again, the first row here is the purchase date. So don't, you're not going to write anything else up in there. So just, just block that off. Because if you write something in there, it's going to mess, it's going to mess up your schedule. So I like to just block it out and you don't, can't write anything in it. All right. So depreciation per unit is the $3. So this is going to be three every year. That doesn't change. All right. The number of units in our case are the miles. All right. So our miles were, I don't know what our miles were. Here, let me make it like this for right here. All right, our miles were 40,000 in 2016, 42.5 in 2017, 57 in 2018, and 60,500 in 2019. All right, so then to get the depreciation expense, you just multiply. So the $3 per mile times the number of miles. All right, and then accumulate depreciation. The first year just goes straight across. Actually, I'm going to delete these because I'm going to show you how to do this. All right, and then book value will be your cost minus your accumulated. So it's the 625 minus the 120. All right, then you multiply the Three dollars times the number of miles. All right, your accumulated equals what you had the year before, plus what you're adding this year. And then your book value is your original cost minus the accumulated. All right, so this formula you could actually copy down. All right, it's just multiplying. And this one I have a formula in here now too. It's doing the one above plus the one over. So I can copy that down as well. All right. Now this one, I can copy it, but if I copy it like it is, it's not going to be correct. Because what I have right now is to go, to go up two and then over one. So the over one is fine, but if I'm down here and I go up two, it's starting with the 505. So if I want to copy this formula, I need to make sure it always goes to the 625. Here, let me show you what I mean. If I 
If you look at the formula right now, it's J21 minus I23. And if I copy it down, it's going up two, so it's going to J22 minus I24. All right, the I24 is fine, but it needs to go to the J21. So before I copy this down, I need to add a dollar sign in front of the, tw the row 21, and then that makes it absolute, which means it will always go to J21. So now when I copy it down, notice it's J21. All right, and once again, my ending book value equals the salvage value. Okay, just like it did up here. Ending book, the book value will equal the salvage value at the end of life. All right, the last one is double declining. So let's go see what the info for this one was. All right, the bulldozer cost us $850,000. Estimate the bulldozer will no longer be useful after four years. At the end of four years, the bulldozer will probably be worth $150,000. And they're going to use the double declining balance method. All right, so four years, 150. Okay, so depreciable cost is, is still the same as before. You still calculate like you did the other ones. So it's the $850,000 minus the $150,000 of salvage. All right, it has a four-year life. However, this one is a little bit different. All right, same as before, though. Block off this first row. You're not going to write anything in that. All right, that's the date that they bought it. All right, now, you might notice where the other ones up here, they're like, this had depreciable cost. This one has book value. Okay, it's, it's book value, not depreciable cost. So you're going to start with the actual cost of 850. All right, this is going to come down here. So this number is going to come down here. Okay, you could also do equal that number if you wanted to. All right, now the depreciable rate, the DDB rate, all right, DDB means double declining. So it's two times the straight line rate is what that means. All right, the straight line rate is one over the life. So in our case, it's one over four. All right, so the DDB rate equals two times one over four. All right, and that's what that is, which in our case, if you do two times one divided by four, you get 50% or two fourths, um, but 50%. All right, so it equals two times one divided by four. And that is calculated over here. All right, and then you multiply it out. Right, and that's our expense. And for the first year, that just carries over, and that's our accumulated. All right, and then our book value is the 850 minus the 425. Okay, so now then remember, this book value here goes down to here. So 425 comes down to here. So our book value at the beginning of the year. All right, our rate is still 50%. That doesn't change. And you multiply. All right, our accumulated appreciation is last year's plus this year's. And then our book value is our cost minus our accumulated. Okay, then this 212 comes down to here. All right, 50% doesn't change. You multiply it out. 
All right, now, what I'm doing, we're going to have to change it, because, and I'll show you why here in a second. Okay, so they're my accumulated, the previous year's accumulated, plus what we added this year. All right, and then it's your original cost minus your accumulated. All right, now, one thing I want to point out. We have this 150,000 residual value, our salvage value. And if you remember from the ones above, book value at the end should stop when it hits salvage. All right, I've gone down too low here. So this should be the residual. I tend to call it salvage. Residual and salvage are the same thing. Should be the residual value of 150,000. That's when you should stop depreciating. All right, so this one I can't, I can't actually do this this time. Um, I'm going to do a strikeout maybe. Let that work. Okay, I can't do that because it's too much money. I have to work backwards. I know this has to be 150000 all right, and for that to be 150, I've got 850 minus 150. This has to be 700. Okay, 850 minus 700 equals the 150. And then this is going to be the difference between there and there. It's, this is going to be the 637,500. Well, I should say seven. I should start with seven. 700. Minus 637,500. Okay. And then you don't have anything in year four. Because we actually... Finish it up in year three. Okay. All right. That's it.